Hey, I'm Jake, and today I am drawing this, and I'm answering the question, why do you create? Alright, before we get into the video today, I want to talk about what I've been up to for the last few months. I haven't posted a video in a while, and it's because I've been super busy. Number one, Skyheart's just taken a ton of time to color it, to get the files prepped and ready for print, but they're over at the printer overseas and I should be getting books here in the next few months. So that was a big project that is done and out of the way. The other big thing that I've been working on is I started a podcast. Yes, it's called Three Point Perspective, the illustration podcast. And it's me, Will Terry, and Lee White, my fellow teachers at svslearn.com. And we just talk about illustration. We talk about how to make illustration, how to make a living off of your art, how to make an impact in the world with your art. And you know, just issues that every illustrator or creative person deals with. I was actually talking to my sister who has not a single like artistic bone in her body. She admits it herself, she would tell you. It's not me like being mean. She said, I I even listen to that podcast and I'm getting stuff from it that I can apply to what I'm doing as she's homeschooling her daughter now and the other projects projects that, that she takes on and just the way that she lives her life. So from a non-creative person, I shouldn't say non-creative, from a non-artistic person, she is very creative, but from a non-artistic person, hearing that, it, you know, makes me feel like we're doing some good stuff with that podcast. I know she's also my sister, so she's going to be a little bit biased, but... What do you want? So check out the podcast. It's a good fix if you've been wanting more content from me and you're wanting to listen to my voice for some reason. Will Terry actually has a, a smooth baritone voice, so if you're gonna listen to the podcast, just go for his for his sexy voice. Gosh, dang, this really is going off the rails. <laughs> anyway, uh, where can you listen to the podcast? It's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. Uh, you can even go to svslearn.com and just download it and listen to it from uh, the podcast link on svslearn.com. So check out the podcast. We're already seven episodes in. It comes out every two weeks. I'd love it if you subscribe to that. That's all I wanted to talk about. So let's get into the drawing and today's discussion. Okay, starting a new sketchbook here. This is my first drawing in a new sketchbook. And, uh, and today I want to answer the question while I'm drawing. I want to ask, answer the question, why do you create? And I was asked this question on the svslearn.com forums a, a while ago. It's probably a year ago. And it's something I just keep coming back, back to. It's like, why do I create? And before I start unpacking this, there's another, and maybe it's even a more important question, and that's this. Why does knowing why you create even matter? So I, I think you need to figure this out because knowing why you create informs everything you do as a creator. Knowing why you create helps you stave off feelings of inadequacy, helps you stave off feelings of frustration and imposter syndrome that often come with putting your creative self out there for people to see uh, and for people to judge and for people to respond to. Knowing why you create motivates you to improve your craft and it sets a foundation for you to build a career on. Knowing why you create gives purpose to your art, and by extension, it gives purpose to you. Knowing why you create is key to being happy, uh, satisfied, and a more creative person. I think there's three reasons to create. There might be more, and you know, I posted this idea on my blog, and, and I got some other answers from people. Uh, so if you could think of other reasons why you create that don't fall under these three categories, I'd, I'd actually love to hear what you have to say in the comments. So a particular act of creation can satisfy one of these three reasons, or all of them. It can be a combination. I also think that all of these reasons are the right reasons, and you shouldn't feel bad for being predisposed to one over the other. But I think these three just about cover everything. So why does a person create? Reason number one, and that is just personal fulfillment. I think this is the most basic and primal reason for creating. This is why little children pick up cray crayons and they fill the sheets of construction paper with you know, drawings all over every inch of the paper. They fill it with colors. They cut out pieces of paper and glue them on there. 
um, because they're not so much worried about they're not so much worried about what they're creating as that they are creating. And I think a lot of times we, as creators, sometimes feel like we have to have experiences in order to base our creations on. And I think when you're creating at one of the purest fundamental levels of just personal fulfillment, the act of creating is the experience. That's an experience in and of itself. So this reason of personal fulfillment satisfies one of our most innate desires, and that's to turn raw materials into something organized, to turn a imagination into reality. So I had a knack for drawing early on, but I admit when I look at my early drawings, they look no more special than any other kid who liked to draw. Um, I used to think I was really hot stuff, and then I, st- <laughs> I, I compared my drawings to some of the drawings my kids were making at the same age, and I was like, oh, there's nothing special, <laughs> nothing special going on here with what I was doing. Um, so, uh, uh, however, I got a lot of positive reinforcement from my parents and from my classmates as I would draw. Um, they would see something I would draw. They'd say, this is really good, Jake. You should keep doing it. And that gave me the confidence to grow and to improve in my art. I remember getting a rush when I would create things, sometimes with my art, sometimes with Lego. Sometimes it was just combining my toys into new creations. I love putting something that had my creative fingerprint on it out into the world. And I began to crave that feeling and found myself in what I call my, my creative rush cycle. Okay, so the step one in the cycle was put myself in a position to get the creative rush. Okay, so that would be, you know, maybe I'd watch a cool um, animated show on TV and I'd get done with it and be like, oh, I want to make something like that. Or um, I would see something that another friend of mine had drawn at school and I'd come home and be like, okay, I want to draw something cool like that. Um, So that was step one is I'd put myself in the position to get the creative rush. And then step two of the cycle is I would feed off the rush by creating something as awesome as I would create. So that was the the creative part of that rush. And then step three is I'd try to get positive feedback and reinforcement from my parents, from teachers, um, from peers on the thing that I created. And at every step, I was feeling good things, and that's why I did what I did, to feel good. To keep those feelings coming, I had to repeat that cycle. You know, the, 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 the rush would die down, the high would die down, and I'd be like, oh, I'm craving, <laughs> I'm craving uh, positive feedback for something. And so I'd go make something and then show it off to, to, get, that, to get that feedback again. So what happens when you do something a lot over and over and over and over again? You get good at it. And by the time I was in high school, after repeating this creative rush cycle over and over and over again. Uh, By the time I was in high school, I was the best artist at the school. Um, I was known as the kid who was good at drawing, and I was sought out to draw things for people. Um, I remember I designed a bunch of t-shirts. You know, a club would come to me and say, Jake, would would you draw our t-shirt for us? And I would charge them 20 bucks or whatever, you know, and, uh, and go on with my day. Um, I remember in high school, I was also the president of the art club, and we went on to win club of the year that year for the work that we did as art club. Um, I also won the artist of the year award my senior year, and that was like that was really cool because the artists in my high school that I really looked up to had won that award in previous years too. So I, you know, it was really I felt great that that I had. Um, risen to their level, you know. So drawing and art was central uh, was central to my identity. And it is this very personal reaction to creation that I think drives many people to pick up a pen and make something that wasn't there before. Okay, so that's reason number one, just personal satisfaction. Okay, now on to reason number two, and that is reciprocation. Okay, so this is 
creating as an act of mutual giving and receiving. You create to receive something beneficial in return. So sometimes this is a job or contract work that you're financially compensated for. And sometimes it, it might not even be for money, but it might be for exposure. Uh, sometimes it's to build out your portfolio or to learn how to do something better. But whatever you're doing, in the end, your active creation facilitated the means to you receiving something that benefited you. So it could be money, it could be exposure, it could be that now you have created a thing that you can then go on and sell. Um, uh, you now have a portfolio that you can then go out and get a job from, something like that. So you're creating for reciprocation. So for me, when it was time for me to go get a job and to make something of myself, I realized that I wasn't qualified, nor was I even interested in doing anything that wasn't creative. In my early 20s, I found myself working for an animation studio, getting married, and having a kid all in the space of three to four years. So now that meant that my reasons for creating was doing the thing I was good at to get a steady paycheck, and personal satisfaction would have to take a backseat. So for about 12 years, I grinded at different studios working on projects that I was sort of interested in. Like, I wasn't super excited designing foliage for backgrounds in talking animation, talking animal animation movies. <laughs> but I was doing that stuff and I was getting better at my craft. And in the meantime, I was also supporting a family. So that was my reason for creation was to support a family and a lifestyle. But I still craved the rush from reason number one, from that personal satisfaction. So I did a lot of personal side projects that allowed me to go through my creative rush cycle. I would post on forums, and then when forums went out of vogue and blogs came into fashion, I would post on my blog. And then when blogs went out of fashion and social media came into vogue, I would post on social media. And then I started to see my work getting published, and I would go to bookstores and libraries and see my work there. Um, and so at each one of those stages, I got the rush of creating things that, A, I thought were awesome, but also these were things that I was getting um, acknowledged for. Um, they were things that I wanted to create, and, and I would get that positive reinforcement from my peers. So reciprocation is the reason so many things you love were put into the world, like Harry Potter, Star Wars, Spider-Man, like all the mo Marvel movies, they all exist because people had rent due at the end of the month. And the thing that was motiva motivating them to, uh, to create that piece of artwork was they knew a paycheck was coming at the end of it and they would be able to pay rent. That doesn't also mean that they weren't getting immense personal satisfaction from drawing Spider-Man, but... Um, a big part of the motivation there was it was a job. They were getting paid for it. So that's reason number two. Reason number three, societal enrichment. This is, I think, the third reason that people create things. So this reason for creating is based on a selfless need to put something good into the world. This could be because the creator feels indebted and wants to pay back the community or a creator sees a need and tries to fill it with something only they can create. So if you're a storyteller, you hope that your stories strike a chord with an audience and that the audience is changed by your creation. An artist hopes that her art adds to the conversation that society is continually having about how we should behave and think. And the teacher, I think, is, is motivated by her student's success in their application of her teachings, right? So, so while the rush and the financial support are still part of what I do, I'm finding myself more and more motivated to share what I do with others as a way to improve their life on some level. So that's why I like teaching. That's why I like making, uh, making classes and courses for svslearn.com. Uh, it's why I like making these YouTube videos when I have the time to make them. Um, and these videos are all about unpacking issues and problems that are facing creative people. It's why I also like drawing things that have a story to them. They aren't just pretty pictures, but hopefully they make someone stop and take someone to a place in their imagination. So if I have any mission now, 
It's to help elevate people's ability to create good things. I want people to have that awesome feeling you get when you make something. I want to give them uh, positive feedback, and I want them to get positive feedback from their own peers. Um, and I would love it if they could someday turn it into a career or a way to supplement their income. So whether it's the impetus or a side effect, a side effect of creative work, societal enrichment is, I think, a beautiful reason to create. And as I look at these reasons through the lens of, of my own creative life, it's interesting to see what was driving my decisions at different times in my life. At first, I was just drawing because I wanted to do what was good for me. Then that turned into drawing because it was a means to do what was good for those I was immediately responsible for. Then that turned into drawing because I want to do what's good for the larger community. I think that creations that have the biggest impact in the world satisfy these three reasons. They, one, fulfill the creator's needs. Um, They also fulfill the needs of that creator's responsibilities. And I think they also fulfill the needs, fulfill the needs of the larger community. That said, not everyone sits out to impact the world with their art, and that's just perfectly fine. If drawing puts a smile on your face, that's reason enough. All right, thanks for watching today. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys have something to add to this conversation. What are your reasons for creating? Uh, do your reasons fall under the three categories that I that I listed today? Do you have another category or another reason that I'm totally overlooking? Uh, Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think and I will see you next time.